For anyone who's not aware, this kind of speculation about Taylor Swift's sexuality seems to have taken root on TikTok. So I'm someone who is a reasonably big fan of the music of Taylor Swift, I would say. And so when I first got TikTok, um, some of you will know that if you ever open up a new account, whether it's TikTok, whether it's YouTube, whether it's Twitter, on any of these kind of algorithmic based sites, then early on what, you, what will happen is you'll get served the lowest common denominator content as it slowly tries to figure out what you want. I recently, I, I think I'd set up a new work email and I accidentally went into YouTube with, with that on and got all the default settings. And so you very quickly get all your Mr. Beasts. You get a lot of that kind of prank stuff. If you go to Twitter, you get a lot of Elon Musk and uh a lot of kind of self-appointed thought leaders. On TikTok, you get a number of different things, but one thing that you get a lot of is Taylor Swift content. But it was really interesting the point at which, after watching like five clips of Taylor Swift singing sad songs on a massive stage, it very quickly got to the point that it would then start recommending me these so-called like gala videos in which people would speculate on whether Taylor Swift is gay or not. I wonder if we should take a little look at this article. I think it is fascinating that it is 5,000 words, and I almost wonder whether the fact that it is 5,000 words speaks to an anxiety about the worthwhileness of this article. For context, 5,000 words is longer than most of my YouTube videos, and I almost wonder whether there is an extent to which this is kind of reaching for the same audience as the slightly too long YouTube video essay. Miss Swift performed Shake It Off as a surprise for patrons at the Stonewall Inn. Rumours that were perhaps little more than fantasies, seemingly like much of this article, Swirled in the queerer corners of her fandom, would Miss Swift attend New York City's World Pride March on June the 30th? You feel like an article in the New York Times probably shouldn't include, too many times, phrases like, there's no way of knowing what could have happened, or we might never know the answer. This is just bizarre. Okay, sorry, there's no way of knowing what could have happened if Miss Swift's masters hadn't been sold. All we know is what happened next. In early August, Miss Swift posted a rainbow glazed photo of a series of friendship bracelets, one of which says proud with beads in the color of the bisexual pride flag. It does not illuminate whether that is because she was a straight cis ally or because she was stuck in the shadowy, solitary recesses of the closet. Oh my good, there is something really depressing about just like the lack of belief in the idea that someone can't advocate from community that they're not a part of right there's, there's something so depressing and unimaginative and just sad in terms of how you view humanity that you can't believe that someone could do that and what are the hundred thrown out speeches i almost said to you in her chronicle of self-doubt the archer if not her identity Oh my goodness, this really is just fan fiction at this point. Like, you know where you, occasionally, if you stumble across an online community that you're not a part of, and you, like, read a sentence that someone's written, and you're like, these people are so in deep into this community that I cannot understand, like, this basic, this almost doesn't read like English to me. Some of this is like that. It feels like there's definitely an article that could have been written about the people that are obsessed with this, about the TikTok community that is obsessed with proving that Taylor Swift is gay. But this isn't that. This is like you stared into the void and the void has stared back. It feels like the kind of article that used to be published 10, 15, 20 years ago, where celebrities would like get outed. There's no like proof here, there's just loads of speculation. At some point we decided that that was a bad thing, that that was like an evil thing to do and yet sort of is the same thing but dressed up in this sort of weird progressivism i guess every time an artist signals queerness and that transmission falls on deaf ears that signal dies i mean like even if taylor swift is bisexual or gay and she is putting all these things in these songs it hasn't fallen on deaf ears because lots of people have spotted that and that is the thing that she is comfortable with doing the idea that it's just disappeared is not is not true because you have clearly discovered it and thought about it a huge amount.
So whatever you make of Miss Swift's sexual orientation or gender identity, something that is knowable perhaps only to her, or the exact identity of her muses, something better left a mystery, choosing to acknowledge the sapphic possibility of her work has the potential to cut an audience that is too often constrained by history, expectation and capital, loose from the burdens of our culture. And that was the article to write. The article to write was the one about the possibility of reading all this stuff into her work. And that's like fine and good and would have been really interesting. Instead, we get this really like salacious, speculative article, which has to extend those readings into the artist herself. After all, would it truly be better to wait to talk about any of this for 50, 60, 70 years until Miss Swift whispers her life story to her biographer? Oh... It is that thing of trying to preempt the criticism here and trying to like present this sort of tabloid journalism as kind of brave, I guess. Actually, yeah, about half this article is justifying the existence of this article to ensure that mere culpers come only when Miss Swift's bones have turned to dust and fragments of her songs float away on memory's summer breeze. And so I must say as loudly as I can, I can see you, even if I risk foolishness for doing so. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> Tiger Bouquet saying, I feel like Taylor Swift's life story is probably not going to be whispered, just generally looking at her career. Yeah, I don't think her songs are going to be fragments of her songs float away on memory's summer breeze. Like, at this point, she is probably one of the biggest pop stars, not only now, but, like, of all time. Like, particularly if you consider how fractured our culture is these days, like not, and I'm not using that in a negative term, I mean that the existence of the internet means that it is easier for people who are interested in really niche things to find other people who are interested in really niche things. That leads to a culture which is naturally a bit more fractured, right? Because there was a time where you had five TV channels and you could only listen to the radio in the car, and so even if you didn't like Taylor Swift, you had to listen to Taylor Swift all the time because you were constantly being surrounded by Taylor Swift related stuff. That's not completely not the case now, like it would be hard to not be aware of Taylor Swift, but if you don't enjoy the music of Taylor Swift, like it's fairly easy to ignore her stuff. You put different music on on your phone, you watch different YouTube videos or different programs on Netflix or whatever, um, it's much easier to disengage from that than it would have been in a previous era. Because for the music industry, like, that machinery meant that whatever artist the labels wanted to push, like, they had a pretty good mechanism for doing so. And the fact that even in that this era of a much more fractured culture, she's still able to gather like so many people in football stadiums and massive auditoriums is like amazing, right? So in many ways, the fact that she's able to do like Beatles level concerts in a postmodern post-internet era has to be one of the biggest pop stars of all time, right? In that in that sense. I remember the first time I knew I had seen out Taylor Allison Swift break free from the trap of stardom. Okay, this must be coming to the end because it's gone back to calling her Taylor Allison Swift. I was there through a fuzzy fan cam. I saw it. And somehow that was everything. And that's it. Um <laughs> just just bizarre that this exists. <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, I think horribly uncomfortable is precisely it. Like, well written. I did not hate the pro style of this. This is clearly someone who is a talented writer. Like, it does re re read like it was written by someone who is absolutely immersed in this gala community. But yeah, this feels like the kind of direction that the social mediaization of the press is sort of bound to send us because they need the clicks, right? 